It doesn't seem possible. It's just too much of a reach. Science doesn't prove it. Where's the dead one? No one has a dead one. There aren't any bones. There's no teeth. A car would have hit one and killed it by now. I have hunted all my life and never seen one. I'm from the country. Raised cows since I was born. I've been a logger for 30 years and never saw nothing. There's millions and millions of people on this earth. Someone would have a good video by now. All those cell phones, all those game cameras. Where's one good picture? Valid. All valid points. Very logical. Very sensible. Very comforting. Until. Until 800 pounds of legend shows up. Now you can smell him. His eyes luminous. You're close enough to hear his voluminous breathing. Science and logic just caught the last bus out of here. You are now facing what shouldn't and can't be. Standing on the shards of a broken paradigm, you don't need a watch to know what time it is. It's zero squatch 30. Bobby, thanks a lot for coming in and talking to us tonight. Uh, real interesting story you've got th that you were telling me about, and I was wondering if, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of it. Um, you were saying that, uh, well, I'll let you tell the story, Bob. Okay, no problem. Glad to be here. Uh, I've been over the road truck driver for 40 years now, seen a lot of things. Very few things ever scared me, but I saw something that scared me back in about 89. And uh, before this, I would have told you, if you told me it's such a thing as a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch, or Ape Man, or whatever existed, I would ask you what windmill you were sitting <laughs> on smoking dope, because I didn't believe in them. And I was north of Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, I believe it's Highway 28 that runs up there, and you get on 72 or 79, 97 and Route 2 come together. And I was just north of there, uh, sunny, I forget the name of the little town, I was just north of it, there's a pullover where trucks park at night. I was going to load apples, it was apple season in the fall of the year, and I was going up to load a load of apples, come back to Abington, Virginia, to the Mid-Mountain Warehouse, and uh, it was about 12 at night, Washington time, so I pull over. I know I can't get no parking at the Apple House because there's going to be a lot of trucks up right, there. Right, right. So I pull in, roll my windows down a little bit, uh, cut my truck off, crawl back in the bunk. This is like on some country yeah, pole. Yeah, it's, it's a two-lane road. Right it's on. just a, it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but it's about like going through the forest, only, like, it's, only it's not about, steep or mountainous. It's just rolling country. It's like a and, blue highway, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a U.S. highway. Yep. And uh, I pull over. There's this place that's got trash cans and a little picnic table and just different stuff for people to stop at. Basically a scenery look out at the mountains and stuff. And I pull over and uh, go to bed, crawl back in the bunk. I just pull. I'm tired. I slip my boots off, crawl back in the bunk. And not long before daylight, now, now let me interrupt you for a second, Bob. Did you have like, uh, did you have the windows down? Were they? Well, up? they were probably down six inches on each side of the truck. Okay. You know, I just I had an air window on the right. I rolled it down about six inches. I rolled it down about six inches. That gives you a little breeze, a little air through okay. the truck. I mean, we're talking fall of the year during apple gathering season. It's not real hot and it's not real cold. Okay. And uh, I wake up, and there's this horrible horrible stench stink I mean it's like makes me kind of want to gag you know mm -hmm. and I stir around a little bit and I get up it's still dark I slide up in the driver's seat fumble around and get my cigarettes my lighter and when I flick my lighter I got one of those old big light or Zippo Zippo lighters it's fluid lighter when I light it up I catch a glimpse of something right in the windshield of the truck and it's like there's two red dots, big old red dots. Mm -hmm. So 
I held a lighter up to the windshield and it moved. It's like stepped back. So I lit my cigarette. I rubbed my eyes, rubbed my face, and kept rubbing, looking, and trying to peer out and see what it was. Finally, I got focused. It looked like a man, but it wasn't a man. It was the biggest creature I ever laid eyes on. <laughs> how how high do you suppose these red dots were that you were looking at? Well, from the ground to the bottom of the windshield on a cab over truck is approximately six feet. And he was halfway up the windshield. I'm looking at him eyeball to eyeball and me sitting in the seat. Nice. And now, remember, this thing is only as far away from me as you are right here. A couple feet, basically. A couple, three feet, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm two foot from the windshield, and he's right there outside the windshield. Right. So, I panic. I mean, I'm scared to death. I'm, I'm having trouble breathing, you know. I panic. So, I turn the headlights on, and he don't care. He just steps back a step and looks at me. Every time I make eye contact with him, he's got a different... You know, his face changes. Right. And then I tried to blow the air horn, and the air pressure was down. It just went, ooh, and he kind of looked up at the top of the truck and looked back at me like, you idiot, or something, you know. I mean. Not real intimidated Yeah, not at real this intimidated point. at all. He, he ain't, there ain't no fear in this thing, and he knows I'm scared because he can sense that I'm scared. Right. So I cranked the truck up, and the air buzzer on the low air pressure got his attention now. He was you know, doing one of them bike take numbers and looking at the truck. But it still really didn't startle him. And I'm trying to fumble around. I speed the motor up, try to race the motor, and he don't care if he raced the motor. It don't phase him. He's still standing three or four feet from the truck. And finally I get it to where I got enough air pressure to leave, and I start to pull out. Well, I catch a glimpse of something, and there's two more. Up ahead of you. Up ahead of me. And one of them is probably about my size, about, I'd say five and a half, six foot, and it's not very big, it's skinny, different made, and then there's one that's between that and him, and I'm like, you know, I'm scared worse then, but I'm moving, so I go ahead and start pulling out, and he just kind of saners off toward them, and down over the bank, and they're gone, you know? Not a care in the but, world, just walk away. But what gets me is, I've always seen the drawings and the pictures, and they had hairy faces and big old noses and big old my all this stuff. Not the one I saw. He had a rounded face, didn't have any hair at all on his face. I mean, he had eyebrows like people do, and but his hair that started under his chin, under his neck, and went down. And he had real big old hands. I mean, humongous hands and long arms, big arms. And I'd say if you put a tape measure on his shoulders, you was bumping four foot across his shoulders. Wow. And But that smell, man. That, how, how would you describe that smell? I mean, was it like rotten meat? Was it like no, I've uh, never, wet dog? Closest thing I can come to is just just corn, you know, just, just rotten, just a rotten, rotten. I'd say a buffalo hunter would probably smell close to it. Maybe I don't know. I never smelled a buffalo hunter, but, but you know imagine. what I'm saying. It's yeah. like it's it's just a smell that that hangs and it don't go out of your nostrils. I mean, six hours later, you still get a whiff of this, and I'm like, it was coming from them. Yeah, yeah, it was coming from them, and I knew what I basically understand why they were there because. All week I had been eating. I mean, I'd grab a quick meal because I had so many furniture stops. I'd grab a burger. I'd grab fried chicken, a piece of pizza, whatever, you know. Right. And when I get done eating with it, I'd put it in the box. And the passenger side of a cab over has got the perfect trash can. Yep. You just chuck yep. it over there. I've seen many of them that look that way, yep. Yeah. And at the end of the week, you get out and you clean all your shit yep. out and brush yep. it out and you're yep. ready again. Yep. Well... Then that, plus, there was a box of donuts somewhere in the truck. And, I mean, you know, goodies and candy bars and stuff I've been eating on. But the smell of the food, I think, is what brought them. Because the truck wasn't running. The truck was quiet. I was quiet. Everything was quiet. And then I went on up to the Apple House. And these guys laughed their ass off at me. 
they laughed so hard they were about in tears. And I thought, I said, you really think this is funny? He said, no. He said, we know what's going on. He said, we know you saw something. And we also can tell you that during apple season, these things will go through the apple orchard and pick out the tree that they want the apples. They've got a certain appetite, a certain taste. And when they find that tree, they'll demolish it. They'll clean every apple on it off. Uh, they'll break branches, limbs, whatever, to get to it. I mean, you think about this. This thing was a good eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. His arms went plumb down to his knees. Yep. When he reaches up, he's reaching 14, 15 feet in the air, man. That's most apple trees and because they taller, cut them short. It's taller than most apple yeah. trees out yeah. there because they're dwarf trees. And, I mean, could you see one of these things standing there picking a bushel of apples? <laughs> and how many apples could one of these things eat oh, would be another goodness. question, too. I have no idea. <laughs> I'd say one of them could put away a bushel real easy, core eat, and all, you know. Eat more apples than an Amishman. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be getting carried away now. <laughs> but no, I've, I've told very few people my story because people don't believe, and, and I know I was one of them people, you know. Yeah. I was one of the ones that I'd make fun of you and sure. put my arms down and act like I ate and all this crap, you know. And then well, after I saw this one, well, I didn't see one, man. I saw three. Yeah. And I'm like, they exist. And, but the face on him, where I was talking about no hair, the closest that I can describe him, I mean, I've been all over the, I've been everywhere except for Alaska and Hawaii. I've been all over Canada, the northern provinces. I've been up into Alaska, up to the North Shore, all over the country. The closest people that I can describe him looking like is the Chinook, the, the true original Indian or Alaskan or whatever you call them. They're in the Northwest Territory of Canada and they're in Alaska. But they've got a rounded face. They're kind of a, they're not black, they're not red, they're just a dark colored people, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're round faced. And that's the closest that I can describe what he looked like. Of course, he did have pretty good size ears. I mean, they weren't real big or real small, but they were they were, I guess they were... Proportional. In, proportional to his size, yeah. And uh, he did not have a little head. You know, I've seen them pictures and stuff where they draw him with the small head on the big body. His head was proportioned to his mass. Was the, was the head, was it high up on the shoulders, low on the chest, no, it uh, set, normal? His, his head set. He didn't have a big, long... He didn't have a neck like me and you got. His head was more down in his mm -hmm. shoulders, not... Yeah. It wasn't like he was, it wasn't like he couldn't turn his head all the way around and look, you know, to the right or the left. But, yeah. But he was, and it could have been muscle mass too, you know, or hair. Right. Because I want to tell you, I was scared shit. Oh, man. I bet, man. <laughs> yeah, I think anybody would be yeah. if they were being honest about it. Yeah, I was, I was, I was so scared that, that I was to the point by the time I got up to the Apple House, which was about 30 minutes away, I was at the point of throwing up. And I don't know where it was my nerve, where it was scared, or where it was the smell, the stench, you know. But it was it was a horrifying it was a horrifying experience. And what got me was this thing had no fear. No fear whatsoever. He wasn't afraid of the truck, he wasn't afraid of me, he wasn't afraid of the lights. Uh, the horn didn't bother him. The only thing that got his attention that I think he had never heard was a buzzer. When the buzzer came on for my low air pressure, when I cranked See, the now down. that that's the most terrifying part to me is like you say the the no fear aspect yeah, of it. There ain't nothing. That. There there there's no fear in them. And I mean, I've seen things all over the country. I've seen unidentified junk. I've seen animals cross the road. Uh, I've seen big masses look like a human run across the road, but I was never close enough to identify what it was right. like I was this. Right. Uh, I've seen, I've heard people talk about ghosts. Yeah, I've seen ghosts. Right. And I know they were real ghosts because I stopped and there wasn't nobody there, you know. But nothing ever scared me. I mean, I was always, I want to see what this is, you know. Yeah. Well, I knew what this was, and I didn't want to see what he was. <laughs> Bob, Bobby, I know, I know this was, uh, you were trying to beat feet and get out of there, and I don't blame you, I would have been yeah. too. But the the other two that were standing off yeah. away, did it? Did they all look uh, similar in color and in appearance? Oh yeah, yeah. They were. 
I wasn't close enough to see facial figures, mm -hmm. but I do know I saw enough with the headlight that they didn't have any hair on their face. They were like he was. But far as to really intensely check them out, no, man, I'm I'm like Mario Andretti. I got to go. <laughs> but no, it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was, it was a, it was ordeal. Yeah. And like I said, I never told anybody about it for years. I knew people laugh at me and it just, it bothered me, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's, <coughs> it's, it's a big deal. It's scary. Yeah. Every, and. And especially if you don't believe in them, if you don't believe it. Yeah, you will I mean, quick when I mean, it happens. I mean, if you don't believe this, I mean, you know, I hear people say, well, I don't believe in God. Hey, he shows up in front of you like that, boys, you'll believe in it. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> you know, it's like. You're, you're not the first person I've ever talked to that, you know, did, didn't give it a thought or didn't believe or yeah. whatever. And then they had a, a pretty up close and personal encounter like yeah. that. And uh, it's a real paradigm breaker. It's oh, yeah. uh, it'll change your way of thinking. Believe me, I didn't park there no more when I went to get apples. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stayed down at Ellenburg until I got ready the next morning. It's about a two and a half hour drive up early. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cryptovania is a good place to tell your story at because uh, yeah. this is a warm audience for this. I, I, most people that are uh, listening or watching in Cryptovania, they're going to be uh, people that see it the same way you do. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of people <laughs> with experiences out there, and not a lot of not a lot of them are brave enough to come forward and tell them. So, I really well, do appreciate that. I'll tell you right now, if you ever see one, and you see him up close, you won't forget it, and it can't nobody change your mind. <laughs> right. You know. I mean, I've seen a lot of things over the years, seen a lot of good things, a lot of bad things, but that was an experience that was like, that was a college education to me in my field, you know what yeah. I'm saying, driving a truck, seeing this and all yeah. that stuff, it's like, wow, man, how many people get to see that, you know? Well, it, 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 it interests me, how many people do see stuff, but they don't, they don't come forward yeah, because of the ridicule it. factor Yeah, they and don't stuff. talk about it. Man. I'll guarantee you if he's a truck driver would ever hauled apples out of out of the northwest if he went out there in apple season and pulled over in a unsecluded place i'll bet you money he's seen one maybe not up close but he's seen them now i'm i'm with a school of thought that i think apples and frogs are the two main things that they survive on and uh, even around here locally where there's apple orchards and stuff i think it's some prime territory yeah, for activity probably and stuff. i know i know that, that one guy out there at the apple house uh he, he, he was a native of there and lived there all his life. And, you know, I asked him, I said, you believe in the Bigfoot? He said, oh, yeah, I don't have to deny him. I've seen several, you know. And me and him was talking, and he was the one telling me that they'll, they're selective about their apple trees. And they would go, you might find an apple where they took a bite of it and just throw the rest of it down because it wasn't to the flavor or it wasn't ripe enough or whatever to suit them. But then when they find that tree that's got their particular taste on it, yeah, that's the one that they wipe out. I mean, they just clean that, it out. That's really interesting, too, because yeah. I've never heard that spin put on it before. Yeah. And, uh, but they're just like me and you. I mean, they got taste that they like. You know, maybe maybe you like spaghetti and I don't. Or right. you like sweet apple pie and I like the crumb pie, yeah. you know. And but, it's, you know, like I think about with the Sasquatch and that is, Everything about them is bigger. Like their their vocals, their voice box is bigger. They have a more of a range of what they can yeah. make for sounds, but and so know, probably their tongue's bigger. They probably taste even more than yeah. we do. But you know that's what's amazing to me. He didn't make a sound. He was as interested in me as I was him after I kind of realized what it was. But he he was really as interested in me as he was anything else. But he didn't make a sound. There, there's something I want to ask you, Bob. Without getting too personal, did was it uh, was it obvious if it was a male or a female? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was obvious he was a male. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's really that's yeah. interesting, uh, and that's that's something that uh, is common to a lot of people's encounters too. Is it's, yeah. it's obvious no, if it's a male or a there's female? There's no there's no denying when you see one of them, it's a male. He's a male. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, uh, <laughs> what got me was, I didn't really, I mean, I, I, I noticed it, that it was a male, you know, the, mm -hmm. but 
far as to inspect or say what color, or I, can, I, I can't. I just right. know that thing was huge. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. You know? But, and it, with the, it, it's funny when people have an encounter, uh, it's so shocking that, you know, maybe they they fixate on all oh, the eyes or mm-hmm. or it was so wide or, or whatever. Uh, and it really gives a lot of credence to how uh, exasperating and shocking of an encounter but this see, is. When he, when he backed up from my truck, my headlights were shining right in that mid, right on that part of it. Yeah. I mean, I had a, a spotlight view. And it, it's, that's so wild. Like, he, yeah. he didn't even take off running. No. He was not afraid of an automobile. He was not afraid of a truck. He was, I don't think there's any. He had no reason to be afraid of nothing except a high-powered rifle. Right. That had been a good one. Yeah. You know. Bobby, if you if if you had to guess a weight on the thing, now I realize this is a oh. quick encounter, but I mean, could you even throw a guess as to what maybe the weight of it was? Well, I had a great uncle that was six seven. He was broad at the shoulders. He was a big man. He wasn't a fat man. He was a big man, and he weighed about two forty five. And this thing was probably three times as big as Uncle Bill. Right on. I'm saying it went to six, seven hundred pounds. Yeah. Range. Easy. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you think about this. They eat, they travel all the time. There's no fat there. This is muscle. Right. And muscle is heavier than fat. Yes, sir. So, I'm saying he was pro. He, he would have bought, he was seven hundred or better and I'd probably, probably say he was seven hundred or better. Wow. Yeah. And I did, I did get to see his foot. His foot, his toes was like, like mine and yours. And his toenail, his nails went down over the end of his they toes. They curved down over yeah. the end. Yeah. But it was like, they were like my fingernails, your fingernails, whatever. And his hands, his fingernails was like our fingernails on his head, but they were all short. Like, I don't know, I guess he, I don't know how he shortened them, but they were short. Probably wore Yeah, ground off from yeah. use. And, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I did. I mean, I got a good, he got back far enough away from my truck. I had a good view of him with the, and he was standing right where one of my, my left headlight was shining right on him. Yeah. And, and I had a good view. Color, the color on him, he was not black and he wasn't red. He was like a brown, mm-hmm. light color brown, maybe a darker brown, light brown. Actually, Actually, his upper body was darker than his legs and his lower body was because, I mean, I guess, I don't know why, but this part up here, his, his torso was a darker color than the rest of him was. Well, it might have been because the light was shining sure. direct on that part of him, too. But he was a light brown color, light hair, like a like a brown bear. Right. And, uh, and his hair wasn't long and scraggly like you see, you know, like the pictures, like people describe. His hair wasn't long and scraggly. His hair was, actually, he was pretty well groomed, I thought. And, but I never could figure that smell out. I don't know. A lot of people think that almost like the same way a beaver has, <coughs> a, that yeah. a beaver will have castor oil, that they have some kind of a... It's a grease that comes out of their skin or something? Yeah, yeah. and some people think it's true. when they're excited, and some people yeah. think it's only like the males do it as like some kind of a sexual thing something. to yeah. know, alert the females or something. Could be but like... But that smell is like, definitely could, common. Could be like a tiger, you know? Yeah. Now, Bobby, like uh, this whole encounter, uh, how long do you suppose this, this whole thing took? I mean, I'm sure it probably Time seemed was... like an hour, but how long do you think? Oh, it seemed like a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> But it took me four to six minutes to build the air pressure up on my truck. You know, that's a great point because I know when your truck's out of air, yeah. you ain't going nowhere until right. you get the air so built up and you know exactly how it, long it takes. I got it up to probably 90 pounds, enough to release the brakes. So it, it was four to six minutes. That's a long time. That's a time. long time when you stand there looking at the biggest <laughs> thing you ever laid eyes on. <laughs> I mean, it's and you said it's a you would, lifetime. You would hit the air horn and run it clean out of air and yeah, stop anyway. Yeah, I did. Anyway. Well, was... whenever I got up, when I first saw him, I pulled on the air horns, and it wasn't enough air pressure to make it blow. It just went, ooh. Yeah, so you was out. You was, was out, out of air. air. Yeah. I was oh. probably down to 
20 pound, oh, man. 18, 20 pounds of air pressure or less. And then you got to sit there, and we ain't talking no new, modern, up to date truck. We're talking an old cab over Freightliner, you know, with a 400 Commons. And just like just the ones we work yeah. on all the time. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And I'm like, it seemed like it took forever, and I'm sitting here holding the fuel down on it. He don't care. The sound of the engine revving up and going fast, it don't bother him. Which, and that's a loud sound, too. Yeah. Well, especially when you're standing right in front of it. Yeah. You know, and, uh, of course, I had straight pipes, too. That didn't. Yeah. But still, well, I said I had straight pipes. I had a little resonator on it, you know, kind of calm it down a little bit. But uh, it was pretty loud. And it's like, it don't phase him. There's no fear in him. I mean, you, For, if you ever encounter one, you remember, he's not afraid of you. There's there's nothing for him to be afraid of. And what, what time of night do you suppose this was, or what time of day, or morning, or evening? California time, uh, I'm going to say it was around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's... It was not long before daylight. Within, within an hour and a half, it was daylight. Within right. an hour, it was daylight. That, that seems and, to be like prime time yeah. for action, too. It's like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning from what we've ever encountered. But, man, it was it was ordeal. I mean, you know, think if, if I've often thought about this. My normal procedure when I get up, when I wake up in the morning, is I wake up, I light me a cigarette, I open the door, I climb out of the truck, I step back at the tires and take a leak. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't saw those red eyes... I would have been on the ground with this thing. Wow. You know, I'm like, no. I never thought of that either. That's pretty terrifying yeah. in itself. I'll tell you what I do. What Ever since then, if I get up and the truck's been cut off and everything's off, I fire the truck up and I turn at least the marker lights on before I get out of the truck. Yes, sir. I've done that ever since that day. You know, it's like, you can ask my wife. Right. You know, we run teams. She's run with me. If we're parked somewhere and this truck's off, I don't get out of the truck unless I crank the truck and turn the marker lights on. And it's like, there's just so much that people don't realize. Or there's so much you don't realize that can happen that's in the dark. The dead ain't going to hurt you. It's what's alive is going to get you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just amazing. It's the stuff that, that, that people have seen that they don't tell about because I've heard other drivers talking I've heard other people talking and people would say something smart to them about you know funny pills or whatever right and they just instantly they just shut up mm -hmm. well you know right then they're telling the truth yep because if they were telling a lie they would continue on. You know what I'm saying? It, Try to convince somebody. It, you know, it, it, all these guys like yourself and other people that have given us their stories and people I've talked to over the years and stuff, you ain't making a thin dime on this. No. You ain't making a dime. Uh -uh. And and you you stand to gain nothing by nothing. by telling the story. No. And, and, I ain't going to be famous for seeing a Bigfoot. Right, you know? right. And, <laughs> and neither is all the thousands and thousands That's of right. other people, yeah. but yet they still come forward oh, yeah. and submit themselves to the ridicule and all the horsing around and all the jazz and they got to take and they still do it anyhow because it's true people don't hey. come forward for a lie to be lambasted by people that don't you, know them. you can ridicule me all you want to but i know what i saw yep and that's that's the same way that everybody i talk to that's how they are i know they're telling i know you're telling me the truth and i know these other people are telling me the truth too there's no doubt in my mind i know it now, these other people, I haven't known them as long as I've known you in most instances, but it doesn't matter. I know when it's, somebody's lying yeah. to me, and I dealt with oh, the public yeah. all my life. thing of it is, is these people that, I'm going to tell you, there's an area, there's an area in the northwest of the United States that runs up into Canada, up into British Columbia, and up in Saskatoon, and all up through there. Mm -hmm. And I've run up, I've run all this territory. There's some... There's some places out there that man has never set foot. I agree with you 100%. I mean, he's he's never been there. There ain't no roads. And there's no roads, and there's very little access to it. Right. Unless you're a mountain goat or something like what yeah. we're talking about. Well, how can people say they don't exist when they've got 
the best habitat of anywhere in the world. Because when you get in the northwest corner of the United States and the southwest corner of Canada, you've got highlands, you've got valleys, lowlands, you've got caves, you've got swamps. Cliffs. You've got anything that they need to survive. Yeah. Food sources. Food sources out the yin yang. Yeah. Water everywhere. And, and it's nothing contaminated. I mean, it, it's all main source, you know? And another thing, too, is like you were saying earlier, you got something that's 8 to 12 foot tall in some instances, mm -hmm. and it's, it's hands bump its knees because the arms are so long. They're browsing in an area of the plant life that nothing else is. Nothing's there. Yeah, so no. they've got they've no. got smorgasbord every place they go, That's everything right. they eat. They got all they want because nothing else can get any, it. Anything they want, all the berries, apples, bro, whatever. It's it's I'm gonna say. Probably, if man knew what they know about the plant life, mm -hmm. we'd never have to go to a doctor. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of truth in that, man. Yeah. Yes, because, sir. And I know they exist. I mean. That's the only one I've ever really seen that I can say I saw one, but I saw other things that I thought was them, but they were too far out of view for me to really identify what they yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bobby, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. That was very interesting, and I uh, sure do appreciate you coming in and, and giving your story to us and stuff. And uh Thanks so much for being brave and coming forward, and I hope that encourages a lot of other people either to come forward or feel better knowing that what they saw they really did see, and this might help a lot of people out. And uh, thanks a lot for coming in, man. No problem. One of these days I'll tell you about the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We'll do that. Thanks, Bob. We'll see ya. Yep. Yeah.